And now for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to another installment of And Now for Something Completely Machinima. I'm Damien Valentine and I'm joined by Tracy Harwood. And Phil Rice. Hey there. Uh, Ricky is um, off having a really horrific time at a horror convention. So I'm sure he's having a really enjoying himself there. Horrific. Um, but it does mean that I like, he... I like what you did there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it does mean that he's going to be absent for this entire month because uh, he's not available as we're recording. Uh, but uh, he did record a special intro about his film pick, which is what we're going to be talking about this week. So um, let's get to it. Uh, I'll cut to Ricky and let him introduce his choice. Hey, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you today, but I'm at the Midsummer Screen Convention, which is a Halloween convention that takes place down in San Diego. But I'll be there with you in spirit. And then I have this short introduction to my pick and that I'd like to share a few thoughts with you so you can discuss them. The title is the <laughs> intriguing. It's called... This is one of the craziest videos, videos I have ever made in my life. <laughs> I love that title. And it's by a uh, filmmaker named Toaster. He used music by uh, titled Code Mistake by Corpse EEXD. It's essentially a music video created in GTA 5. Um, however, it's a very, very different from the other music videos you, you may see made in uh, GTA for one, I took inspiration from Phil's pick a few months ago in which he chose a glitch video in which uh, took place in GTA where uh, cops uh, couldn't successfully negotiate a rooftop and they all fell to their death. Well, that was kind of a, a play. Um, the, the feeling was that it was a young person playing with with toys uh, at the police uh, officer's expense. This is in the same vein. However, I think it's a little more sophisticated because it's not a glitch. Um, he's using uh, scenes from GTA 5 and then editing them in a very unique style. In fact, I think this is an example of uh, style over content because there really isn't much story. It, it fits into the cliche of Grand Theft Audio Auto where the uh, uh, weak or the official are uh, taken advantage of by violent gangs or predators. You see this in the scenes uh, at, in the beginning where these three punks are beating the, and kicking the crap out of this businessman. But then suddenly it changes and there's a single person and you don't know whether it's a hero or whether it's the businessman who's been um, transformed somehow, but he becomes this chainsaw wielding chainsaw for arms and head wielding guy who hero or anti-hero who just blasts everybody but the story is really uh, uh, irrelevant what is incredible is the editing style and the editing style is very much in the mode of 60s avant-garde filmmakers if you uh, Phil in particular would remember this. We did a, a screening of uh, Stan Brackage film. I think it was Dog Star Man in, in which he used all of these incredible flash cuts of of uh, imagery and close ups and far away to create this sort of alienating effect in the viewer. And I think that's the same thing here. The real achievement is the incredible editing in it. Um, it's just masterful. I, it reminds me an awful lot of the editing you see in anime films where there's this quick uh, cut editing. It goes from close up to to a wide shot in a flash. The music is in, integral to the feeling and mood. 
there is a sort of threshold to of admittance to watching a movie like this because it has very heavy metal soundtrack and then the very violent imagery that's shown. I think it's designed especially for a younger audience who uh, would appreciate that and would immediately be eager to watch. Older audiences might have a little trouble with the uh, hard, uh, the heavy metal, but I didn't. I love heavy metal, and I thought it fit perfectly. There are several scenes in it of extraordinary intensity. One where, when the superhero is introduced, there's this wild, flying superhero entrance um, that is just incredibly impactful as it develops uh it eventually leads to him seemingly getting vengeance on the punks although you don't really know it's ambiguous and i think the ambiguity is a strength of the film until finally it just cuts off with uh somebody falling down i'm not quite sure remember who it was and the abruptness of the ending is perfect even though it might be a weakness in another film, it's a strength in this one because everything happens suddenly and quickly and fast. I really like this film, and I like uh, Toaster, the filmmaker. He's made some other films, but nothing like this. In fact, it, at the end of the film, you believe him when he says, this is the most crazy film I've ever made in my life because it is crazy. And if you look at the other things on his channel, nothing else is like it. So I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say about this film. Um, I think it's an example of excellent style in a film. Uh, I don't think he needed the content in it. And frankly, I think if you could go back in a time machine and show this film to the early uh, machinima.com audience, they would go apeshit over it because it fits that rebellious punk style. I just love it. So uh, that's it. We'll see you guys the next time. I, again, I'm eager to hear what you have to say. Bye-bye. Very interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, what did you guys think of it? Do you want me to start or do you want to start, Phil? Let's... Yeah, go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, so when I read this um, creator's description for the video, he said, I always love making crazy things in GTA 5, and I think this is one of my best works yet. So actually, I was kind of looking forward to watching it. I don't think I fully appreciated what he meant by crazy. Um, but as I was listening to the music, uh, can I call it that maybe accompaniment to the, the video? It started to make a little bit more sense. And quite frankly, um, the sound of it just hurt my ears. It's a new single release called Code Mistake, apparently by a YouTuber who makes music under the name of Corpse, collaborating with Bring Me The Horizon. Now, the lyrics are, are um, really um, what I can only describe as Marilyn Manson-esque. Um, and the genre, well, I had to look that up. It's described as deathcore with a melodic orientation towards metalcore with elements of electronica, pop and hip hop. Never heard of that before. Um, and apparently the name of the collaborating band um, is inspired by a line from Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, which I thought was quite an interesting little tidbit. Um, and the music and the lyrics are actually about personal conflict, self-doubt, loneliness, uh, drugs, uh, rock and roll, and so on. Um, now, there is actually an official uh, music video for this, which after watching Toaster's interpretation, I thought I'd watch too. Now, what's interesting about the official video is that it's uh, used anime to show themes of the undead and horror, um, uh, but but quite frankly, it's really not a patch on the the quality, shall I describe them in that way, as of the representations of the slasher type horror in Toaster's GTA V machinima version of it. The aesthetic choices Toaster has made are really well aligned with those of the official video. The you know the kind of flashing lights, the the blood, the social destruction, and 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 death. But there are things like lightning strikes, which add a whole other dimension to this one altogether what um what you actually see are things like silhouettes too which kind of add this sort of surreal aesthetic touch to it it's not just crazy it's crazed horror you are witnessing in the machine if you're in any way sensitive to to the the thought of blood and what have you this is not a film for you i wouldn't say it's a film for me in particular um but i think um what makes it most horrific is that 
rather than in the official video where the characters can only be fictional because they're zombies and vampires and uh, ghouls and demons and things. In this machinima, they're actually the representations of those criminals and dregs of the GTA social world. So they're all too human looking, even if the wicked violence is off the scale or saw like. Overall, despite not really liking the content, the editing is really quite stunning uh, and it's perfectly aligned to the music. Um, so even though it's not at all my kind of thing, I really appreciate the qualities of this um, and certainly think uh, the, the band behind the song should sort of sit up and take notice uh, um, because it, it is they have done a great job with it. Um, and then after I'd made these kind of observations, I listened to what Ricky had got to say about it and I'd... Um, what I hadn't really considered when I was looking at it was the example that he's given of um, Stan Brackage's um, Dog Star Man, a sort of an avant-garde example. I then skipped through that particular film, the, the Dog Star Man, which is basically a story of multiple parts um, having been created between 1961 and 64, I think, that reflects how someone doing some mundane task, walking through the wood, to chop down a tree has these kind of visions of death and decay as he kind of goes about his task now i can see how that could fit this but i actually rather felt that the inspiration was much closer to home with the music creators um because it just seems to be so closely re related to it really and then i was also really interested to hear ricky comment on the style being almost anime which i thought um Actually, that came through really strongly in the aesthetic representations too. Um, Ricky then reflects on the kind of thematic of reincarnation of the person where they are being attacked by thugs, um, uh, but then become some kind of like um, supernatural attacker. Um, what I refer to really in, in my sort of interpretation is a saw-like person. I didn't really pick that level of detail up in the machinima but what's interesting is that it definitely has that kind of thematic in the official video so i'm assuming um it's and uh, this machinima is basically an interpretation of the official music video um have to say um i'm generally not into the blood and gore side of things and the the you know the music was just a tad too heavy for me i, I mean i don't dislike heavy metal but this was just you know, a, what should I say, a string too far, <laughs> if, if, I, if I can say that. But I but I did appreciate the qualities in the film. Um, and as I said, I think the um, original uh, musicians should really take notice of what's been done in this. Um, so, yeah, they're my thoughts on it. What did you guys think? Yeah, the music is, uh, you know, for its genre, the quality is superb. Um, you know, it, whether or not everyone's going to like it or not is is a, a thing to taste. But I think for that, what do they call it? Deathcore That's genre. Cool, yeah. yeah, it's I mean, it it's uh, very well produced uh, music. And yeah, the the energy of the edit uh, maps really well to the energy of the song and this kind of. Uh, like an unleashed chaos. Uh, feel is present I think it's consistent in the narrative mm. what what you know there's the narrative's pretty loose um but in the energy the edit and then the song those all line up really well together um you know there's there was a a device that was used pretty frequently that I don't know what the term for it is but it was almost like uh intended to simulate like you know frames of film with writing on them and stuff uh, I, mean, I i don't know enough about real film to even there's probably a you know anybody who's from that background is going to know immediately what that term is i don't know what it's called um but that was used um a lot maybe too much and 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 i don't know uh it was strange to see brackage type elements um almost used as like bookends for edit points instead of and i never really get that impression from brackage's work that mm. that that for brackage i feel like that that 
that messing around with the frames of the film itself is part of the point, yeah. uh, is part of the presentation, not an editing tool. And that's not necessarily criticism. It's just that that it, I don't know, that if there was anything that was kind of a little disjointed, it was how clearly that was the case, that this is really just used as scene transitions. You know, a regular situation might be a jump cut or a crossfade or something, and instead they would just insert mm. these frames of film or whatever, and then boom, right back to what looks like a cinematic narrative. Um, I don't know how well that worked. I'm still... I'm still up up in the air about that. Um, it's funny because we were just talking before we started recording about the uh, the graphic violence in this, and I had seen it the first time, but it just didn't stand out to me. Uh, and and with and with Tracy, it like I mean, it made her feel a little nauseous, you know. So it's it's, but it's not that I missed it. It just for some reason didn't. Uh, didn't jump out to me in the same way. And I don't know if it's because I've been playing a little bit more first person shooters than usual or something. And those are not, not, uh, not, not kitty, kitty action at all. You know, it's pretty, pretty gruesome stuff. So maybe I am desensitized. I don't know. But, uh, you know, all in all, uh, to say you like it is, is, challenging with the film like this because maybe it wasn't even intended to be made to be liked per se uh but like i think the word that you ended up coming back to tracy was appreciate and yeah i definitely appreciate uh the craft of this with, yeah. with the with the exception that i mentioned about the some of those brackage ish moments kind of felt tacked on um or used as a device and I'm still, I'm still not sure how I've, you know, how effective I feel like that was. Um, but um, it's interesting. And I, I honestly, I, I think this is one of those weird films where the narrative not being pinned down actually services, services the film mm. because there's so much chaos bleeding through from the soundtrack itself that to put that type of song over just a straightforward, easy to follow narrative, that wouldn't work at all, you know? So it needed to feel like almost like the film itself was broken, you know, was being ripped apart by this just frenetic energy coming out of the song. So yeah, all, in that overall Im impression, uh, it, it worked well uh, and it is pretty crazy. Um, you know, I, I can, yeah, I, I, I'll bet it was. Uh, I don't know. This is something I've I've been articulating to others recently that that you know loving the process of making films is the underappreciated joy of getting to partake in this craft. Uh, it's to me there's more to be mined there than there is from any endorphin rush you might get from it really taking off with an audience, you know, cause that's so fleeting and it's so fricking hard to get that if your only aim is that you're going to starve to death, you know, as a content creator, especially machinima, you just never know if it's going to take off and be big or not, you know? And you, if you, if you build your whole expectation on that, you know, it's just okay. But that's dangerous, you know, in terms of if you're going to keep your emotional fire lit about what you're making. And to me, as weird as it is to say that about a crazy film like this, uh, it, it clearly was made with love. And I mean that in the same sense of like a chef who, who preps a dinner and they put their energy into the food and then you taste it, really. And so there's that sense here that it's clear that uh, the person who made this uh got that experience out of making it and to me that's exciting because that's that's where it's at you know you, you you i don't know unless you're really lucky there won't be enough of the applause or attention to the work that much of this work deserves but if you're loving making it then it's a win anyway you know so 
yeah yeah damien what did you think um i thought it kind of lived up to its title <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um no, i thought the visuals really fit the music and i don't know uh because i didn't read any of the behind the scenes of the film so i don't know if he had the song in, in his head and then decided to make some visuals first or if he started making the the film and then put the chose the music afterwards but you know they they work so well together and fairly right that there's a lot of you get the impression that he just had a great time making this and that's what really mattered to him um i don't really know if i can comment too much about because you've already said a lot of what i was thinking um but i can explain the chainsaw man because ah do right so when i saw him uh, i wasn't horrified like tracy and i wasn't completely desensitized to it either what was going through my mind is how i found out about how the character existed <laughs> so it's actually a japanese manga and anime series called chainsaw man and i don't know anything about the story oh. because i haven't seen it but um the a japanese anime theme kind of goes well with the rest of the video oh. now the reason i found out about this character is here in the uk we have this news quiz show called have i got news for you and they kind of poke fun at the the week events in the headlines and for some reason they had this picture of a group of cosplayers dressed up as this, this chainsaw man having a fight with each other and i recognized the venue behind as somewhere i go to comic cons and then the next day i'm in the facebook group for events held there those cosplayers were so excited about being on the show you know we're famous now because we've been on the on this quiz show and things like that <laughs> it made me look them up to see what the character was because i was kind of intrigued by the design and i i think it is a particularly violent uh anime series i would imagine so, so yeah yeah and because the cosplayers had all the blood splattered all over them as well and i thought that looks really horrific so i don't particularly want to watch it but that's how i found out what chainsaw man is so i immediately recognized him and that story about those cosplayers they're not even people i know they're just in this group um and i love the idea that they were on this quiz show it's just a photo that randomly taken about a couple of weeks before somehow got onto the bbc <laughs> and i can't remember what they said about it in the show i just remember it and that's it and then when i saw this video yeah i remember that so that's my takeaway from it i wasn't horrified or anything i was just laughing at what happened what um, if we're wrong? What if we're wrong about Chainsaw Man and and like that manga? It turns out is about it's just about like this really highly motivated Canadian lumberjack. Yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> lumberjack. Yeah, right. Well, I suppose you and he's actually three, very one. nice. Oh, and, and he's an artist. It's like an, it's sculptor. like Edward Scissorhands, you know, and he's he's actually a very gentle soul and just loves cutting down trees. You know, it could mm. be that. Well, I'll tell you what it made me think of, even though I, I didn't know anything about the manga history of it, but there was a game, I think it was only made for PlayStation back in the day. The game was called Manhunt. Oh, yes. I haven't played it. You familiar with it? Yeah. yeah. Tracy, I'll tell you, the, the premise of this game is a horror, is a horror story, just the premise itself. Essentially, the game was made to be where you are a participant on some futuristic reality show where it's all observed by like uh closed caption you know cameras hidden cameras and the objective of the show as a contestant the objective of the show is murder oh. is covert murder you're supposed to murder your way through and it culminates in this situation where you are put into it's kind of like an old abandoned house of some kind, I think. You're trapped in there with this man that's kind of half man, half pig Ooh. running around with a chainsaw. And you're in there unarmed. And this, this pig man, I don't know if it was actually a pig man or if it was a man that's cosplaying as a pig I, I don't know but this crazed lunatic with a chainsaw and you're running around this room unarmed trying to avoid. I don't even remember how you get out of it but 
it's just horrifying. The whole the whole game was horrifying, but that ending in particular was really scary. Uh, that's that's what it made the, the chainsaw made me think of. Uh, so I'm, yeah, there's. If I remember correctly, that game wasn't released here because they couldn't make it. Oh yeah, it got it's... banned some places. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it was remember... very controversial at the time. Yeah, I remember that controversy, and I thought, well, I didn't really want to play it anyway because it's not my kind of thing. But I do remember. I'm I don't know sure why I picked it up. I think I picked it up just because I was honestly, I picked it up because I was intrigued about the controversy. Okay. But it wasn't exactly an enjoyable game to play. But of course I played it all the way through to the end. So what does that make me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, running man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was like a, a, a hyper horror version of running man. That's what yeah. that game was. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. I think the reason you picked up and played it was so that you could know that years later you'd be on this podcast and need to re reference it. <laughs> I do my research. Yeah. Yes, I'm very committed to my research for this <laughs> yeah, show. Good, good. That's, uh, that's fascinating. <laughs> anyway, Ricky, I'm glad you're away because I'd have told you I didn't like it. You knew I didn't like this sort of film and yet you still pick it. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you, Ricky, for very interesting choice um i hope you enjoyed our comments and uh you're having a great time at the, this horror convention so uh i think that's it for us this week so um if you have any feedback or if you want to talk about uh this film or if you've got any more thoughts on chainsaw man please let us know at uh completely mich talk at completely machinimo.com send us an email and we will uh you know have a read and see what you have to say um yeah, so that's it. Uh, so take care from me, from Phil and Tracy. Uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.